is the material that you were using to read. Good. Well, okay. Well, that was good then. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about criminal law and its main elements. What are the building blocks of criminal liability in the access area of it? As I said, if you have any questions while I'm talking, please feel free to stop me and I will be gladly uh, ready to stop and answer your questions, okay? If I don't have the answer to your questions, don't worry, you'll have the answer anytime very soon. Uh, just let me set up here a little bit and, okay, so, the main elements of criminal law or the basic elements of criminal law or the, of a crime will be three. We're going to be talking about actus reus, mens rea, and we're going to be talking about the defense. Uh, today, we're going to cover mainly actus rea and mens rea. Uh, I'm going to make some reference to the defenses, but not too much to them. Uh, does anybody have any background on what actus rea is or what criminal law is? Any contact we've had with criminal law before? Okay, can somebody tell me what conduct, okay. Good, so um, seeing here conduct, act, external component would be conduct, that would be an act prohibited by law, that's all. Right. We're also talking about conduct and lack of, or lack of conduct. Any other idea? When do we talk about criminal law? What does it regulate? Okay. Access rail will be a physical component of it, yes. What does it mean, access rail? And what is a crime? And what is the law? So I have here the law is statutes, statutes and cases. Yes, can be the law can be either in a statute or in a or a case. We're talking about Common law, yes. Yes, by state and parliament. Okay, so in general, criminal law regulates a conduct. It might forbid something, it might allow something, or it might just say if you lack or if there's a lack of action, it also may be a crime. An actus rea would be a behavior that is prohibited by the law. Uh, this behavior will be a conduct, will be, a, I'm sorry, will be a conduct of, or a lack of it, and this needs to be criminalized. 
a mens rea would be a liability for serious crimes. I'm sorry, liability for serious crimes requires proof that this person who committed the crimes knew what they were doing or was blameworthy for what they were doing. Uh, for mens rea, we need intention. If it's not done by intentionally, we need recklessly, recklessly, uh, dishonesty behavior. We need knowledge that the crime was being committed or, or the action was being committed at least or believe that you were committing a crime. So we might find cases in case law, as, you, as some of you were mentioning, that a person would be liable just because they thought they were killing somebody, even though they weren't doing that. Um, in all of this, in order for a crime to be committed, we need a state of mind. A person that is willingly committing a crime either because they intentionally are committing it or because they are just disregarding what they should be doing or not be doing. Uh, when we talk about defenses, and as I said, we're going to be talking about defenses later on or probably in the next class, um, we're talking about when a person may or may not be, may not have criminal liability, even though there were elements of the crime present. Even though we will be talking about actus rails or mens rea, there won't be liability because the person didn't intend to commit the crime or was forced to commit the crime. Now, I will have some questions for you. Uh, has any of you worked with prosecutors? No, okay. Well, does any of you will know what the burden of proof is to be convicted of a crime? The young reasonable doubt, right. Why? Yes, we're talking about liberty here. Um, but there's something else. Why would you be, why would you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a person was guilty of a crime? That's right, because you're innocent until you're proven guilty. So the prosecutor will have to prove that you are guilty. They cannot just accuse you and you'll be guilty automatically. Will be the same as to the defense. The prosecutor will have to disprove that something happened or that you have a defense. Now, just a quick review here. Uh, will somebody tell me what is an actus rea? Okay. What do you see on this slide? Unstable house. Well, what is it made of? A house of cards. That's right. You can see the building block. What would you say is the purpose of making this little house of cards?
what would be the purpose of making this little little house of cards? Foundation. What else will it be? Right. In all these cases, and this might sound a little bit silly, the intention of doing this house of cards would be to achieve something. I guess you're looking way too much into criminal law and you're just not looking at the house of cards. Uh, you, if you look closely at it, uh, you may find that this house of cards is made of actually credit cards. So a person could say, um, I make this house of cards because I like it, or because I wanted to do something with my expired debit card, credit cards, or because I was in so much debt that I prefer to build a house out of it, or I just wanted to entertain myself. Anyways, the idea of doing this is that this house should be fit for the purpose you're seeking to achieve. Maybe whether because you like it as a hobby, because you want to learn something from not getting into too much debt, or, I guess, I don't know, you don't want to participate in a contest. So it would be the same. I need, um, I need all the ideas here so we can build this class today, okay? Now we're going to continue talking about, that was just an entertainment for all of you. We're going to continue talking about the essential, essential elements of a crime. Um, in general, uh, criminal law is designated by humans, uh, just like the house of cards. It's designated by humans. We are setting up the rules. We're saying you are allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do this, right? And it's a uh, we're providing here clear rules of conduct, and we're saying what what is the consequence of the conduct, either to either of the action or the lack of action in our conduct. Okay, the idea is to make and keep our society secure and safe from harm. Can you imagine what would happen, or any of you will tell me what could happen or would happen if there weren't uh, clear rules of criminal law regulating criminal conduct. Anarchy, my be. What else could happen? That's right, the powerful will control the wicked. There won't be right. There will also be, you might be guilty for some things, you may not be guilty for some other things, right? That's right, we're talking about lack of certainty. Okay, now we're going to talk about active prayer. Would any of you tell me again? I guess you just told me already. What is an active prayer? The guilty act. A behavior prohibited by law, that's right.
Anybody else? Yes, a component of crime. Do you think it's something physical only? Okay. Well, yes. Yes. It has circumstances. Too. Well, an actus rare is a conduct. It always has to be a conduct. So be it because you are doing something or because you are not doing it. You are being stopped from doing it. Uh, this conduct has to be wrongful. Has to be regulated, has to be said you're not supposed to be doing this. And it has to have a result. Okay? So, as, uh, as I was saying before, let's say, for example, murder. It has to have an element, right? It has to have the fact that you killed somebody. But if you only think about it, would that be a crime? No. Right. Why? What do you need it to? What do you need for it to be a crime? There's no act. That's right. So what do you need? You need a conduct. And we also said before that a conduct can be, yes, a positive conduct. Yes. So what we need for an act to happen, for an, uh, let's see, yes, we need a positive conduct. So what we need is a bodily movement. And we also need that its bodily movement be voluntary. Any comments about it? No comments. Okay. okay. So how would you be able to identify if there's an actus rea in the crime? Here's you we need to find the definition of what the crime is. Uh, where would you go to find it? Status and cases, yes. Right. So you find the definition of a crime. After that, you take from that definition what the actus rea will be, what the action that you need will be. And then you need to identify from that act if the defendant, if you can rely on that act to establish the actus rea from the defendant. There's an example here on the uh, handout that we were given, and let's do it. Uh, it will be activity 3.1 if we do it by 10, right? Uh, can somebody give me the definition of, of 10? Nobody? What is that? I'll prepare you something that does not belong to you. So if I grab a pen from you with the intention of giving it back to you, would that be test? No. So what would that be? Taking property without consent. That's right. We have to have the intention of depriving the other person from it. We don't want to give it back to them. 
Okay, we want to appropriate that. So in that, we are going to find what is the access rails that we need from tests or to define tests. What is the access rails that we need? Appropriating property belonging to another. Okay. So that would be the access rail, right? Now, what if I lend you my book? Okay. If I give you one of my books and I said you can have this book for a week. But after you read the book, you find that the book is really interesting and you won't find another book like this. And you decide to keep the book. Would that be that? Maybe, right? Might be text. I guess you will find that out later in the course. If you never return it, right? What if you sell the book? <laughs> it might. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what would happen to the person that bought the book from you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what we will have to see here, yeah, you have to learn in the future you will find that in law everything you have to answer it or you have to answer everything with a maybe. <laughs> Not nothing is definite in the law. Okay. Now what you will find here is and as we were talking before, is Every case that you will find, you will have to analyze it in two different ways. First, you will have to start by asking, the, the first question will be, has the accused performed the prohibited act? The second question will be, if this act was, a, was accompanied by the specific state of mind or mental element. So as we were saying, if we're talking about test, right, as we were talking before, so if I lend you my book, did you have the first intention of stealing the book? No, that's right. Because I give it to you. So at that moment, it wasn't there, right? Now, the second part would be, do you have the specific state of mind to give me back my book in the future? <laughs> it might not be text. It might be larceny, but you will talk about that later. <laughs> now, in the slide, there's some hypos here. Yes, that's right. So uh, we have, you will make Ken find his yellow highlighter to prepare the next for the next lecture. He decides to look through your desk while you are out getting dinner after court and takes you highlight it instead. Is this test? <laughs> well, how many of you have committed tests while in college? Yes, not really. He's using it, that's right. It depends, right? <laughs> Well, we don't know, right? If I take one of your pens, if we ever meet and I take one of your pens because I need to sign something. Right. So what would you need to determine if this was set or not? Intention. Goodness, you're talking like lawyers now. 
Now we're going to go to the next slide and we'll see how it changes. Now, the same roommate, maybe you don't want to have this roommate, can find his yellow highlighter and he decides to look for you there. You're not in your house, right? In the apartment. And he takes you highlighting instead. So is this test? Okay, I have here, it needs access when the mental state or agreement for that. Depends, it might not be, right? Maybe. What if he thought it was he? Okay, how would you determine if this was set or not? What do you need to do for that? Right. So I have here if he takes it and intentionally does not return it. It will be a wrongful conduct and intention. What if I think the pen is mine? I will have to prove it. Was an I innocent? Yeah. Okay, now. That would be a defense, right? <laughs> now we have another question here. It would be your roommate can find his yellow highlight. Um, he decides to look to your desk and he finds that you have three of the same. Um, he takes one of yours thinking that you won't miss it since you have more than one and he will keep it instead of returning. Will this be test? That is it. Yes. Okay, so there's no question here, right? So we, before here, the previous slide, we have a definition of theft. A person is guilty of theft if he dishonestly appropriates property belonging to another with the intent to permanently deprive the other of it. So is he meeting all the requirements from that? Will there be any defense available to the defendant here? He's insane. <laughs> what about if he says that he's poor? Is that a defense? Necessity might be. What would be the defense? Car. His girlfriend forced him, or maybe the professor did, right? He had to prepare for the next lecture. Yes, you will always have to look at the defense. Now, we are going to continue here in the next slide. We're going to be talking about there's no liability for evil thoughts. So I guess uh, the one who blames his girlfriend won't be liable for this, unless the girlfriend knows about it. In order to have criminal liability, you need to have, as we talked before, it might be the cause, the harm might be caused by an action or by an omission. Uh, we're going to be talking here, or we're talking here about the conduct element of the crime in question must be capable of commission by omission. Then, uh, I'm sorry, this is what we're talking about, uh, 
harm caused by omissions. So here we have circumstances must be such as to create a legal duty to act. The defendant's failure to act must be in breach of that duty. And the defendant's failure to act must be voluntary and the harm must be caused by the omission. Do you know what are we talking about here? We're talking about persons who have, or all of us have, the duty to act when there are certain circumstances. And you may be liable if, or you may be criminal, criminally, criminally responsible if you don't act in certain circumstances. So when crimes or crimes can be committed by a mission, this one may include theft, murder, criminal damage, fraud, and some forms of ma um, of manslaughter. You have to have a duty to act. It might be. And there might be some defenses to it. It might be that you did as much as you could do during the circumstances. The performance of the duty was impossible or the failure to act was justified. Is there any question at the moment? Agreement between people when he alone is the test? Why is that? No question? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we talking a slide number 11? Okay. Oh, this is when you're talking about conspiracy to commit an offense. Uh, in order to have conspiracy to commit an offense, you need an agreement between two persons to commit a crime. So you may not know, somebody mentioned the girlfriend over there, so you may not know if uh, somebody else asked this person, I need a highlight, can you get one for me? There might be conspiracy and there might be somebody else guilty or liable for the crime that was committed. Is that okay? Now we're going to start talking about active spread. Let me find my notes over here. Okay, each offense has a specific path and situation. An act can be prohibited in a situation and at the same time an omission. And we already talked about omissions before. And this omission can also be an active threat, or can also imply active threat. There are certain criminal offenses that do not require the mens rea element for every element of active threat. These offenses are called offenses of a strict liability, and well, you will also study these offenses in the court classes as well. Um, it is essential that every crime offense contains elements of actus rea and that, and that's what we'll be focusing for now. Okay. 
Do you know of any example of a Quran that might be of a strict liability? Mortar? What if you have a distance from mortar? Okay, I was looking more something like statutory rate, for example. Okay. Speeding. Will that be a strict liability? What if you needed to get past to the hospital? Okay. <laughs> or speeding? There might be, depending on where you are. Um, now, the next slide we have here, we're going to talk about conduct. The elements of conduct involve either an act or an omission. For example, not clearing bushes uh, that are hiding the stop sign on an intersection with the intent that a driver will drive down into oncoming heavy traffic without stopping. Okay. So to have a conduct, the act or the action will be an act or an omission. Then this comes this condo will be considered doing an offense, but it involves, as we said before, omission. Um, crimes like perjury contains a conduct or element to simply making a statement of an of oath in judicial proceedings, which is known to be false. The fact that it must be made in judicial proceedings is a surrounding, surrounding circumstances, and you're going to be discussing this later on. In your classes. Now, every act that you perform will have to have a consequence. Uh, and the consequence, for example, of an act like murder or intending to kill somebody will be the death of it. And let's say, for example, you are driving under the influence and you're speeding. The consequence if you have an accident might be the death, the death of somebody. And yeah, so we're going to be talking about here. The result can cause can be caused by speeding the car and running over a child. This will be the act. Not stopping the car at a stop sign and killing the child, crossing the road of omission will be I'm sorry, crossing the road will be the omission. Are we clear here? Okay. So when we have a situation, a consequence of, of, of something, it might be because there was an act or because there was an omission. But anyways, we have a crime. Now, when we talk about, as I mentioned before, we'll be, we'll be talking about circumstances. Circumstances, uh, when we were talking about the test plan, what if the circumstances didn't exist? What element of the crime would, would make the crime a crime? Would make the test a test? Okay, we're talking about here someone 
else's property, the mental estate, and act on by dishonestly appropriate something of somebody else. So what does it need not to happen in order to not to be a text? The lack of intention to do exactly the outcome. Intent to return the property, permission by the owner. Okay, yes. Let's say, for example, I was working on your desk and I left my pen over there. And I leave, or I left my highlighter over there and I leave. And then I come back and I found that you have three highlighters and I think one of these is mine. Will that be test? No. So what is lacking there? The intent. And what else? The wrongful conduct. Because I think it's mine. But it, because it might be mine, right? The circumstances. Yes. There will be different circumstances surrounding the crime. Now, when we talk about, yes, yeah, might create a scene of false sentences. Now, when we talk about crimes, for example, like rape, what does it require? to be a crime. An act of intention, the absence of consent, right. So what happens when the victim was a minor and there was consent? <laughs> yes. It's an statutory crime, yes, because it's prohibited by law. It's a still a crime, that's right. Now, on the next slide, you're going to find some defenses, and here we talk about the defense of automatism. It involves an involuntary act. For example, a driver who runs over a pedestrian, killing him while he's blacked out as a side effect of a medicine. Would this be punishable? Why not? There was no intention, it lacks men's wear. Okay. The question was, what happens or will it be punishable if a driver, a driver is running over a pedestrian and kills him because he's blacked out as a side effect of a medicine? It wasn't voluntary, so we're talking about involuntary actus rev. That's right. Now, an actus rev must be voluntary in order to produce a consequence, in order to be a crime or constitute the elements of a crime. The defendant must have to have the capacity to control his, his movement at the time the actus rev was performed. And we're talking about, in this example, we can change the example from somebody who was who had side effects of a medicine from somebody who was having a seizure, right? They didn't know because 
somebody mentioned here, if the person knows of the side effect, then there might be some liability. But if the person had a seizure while driving, would there be a liability there? <laughs> what will happen then? The question here is, what if someone has a gun to your head and forces you to commit a crime? What defense would there be? Direct. That's right. Yes. So if someone has a gun to your head, it might be direct if you commit a crime under that. What if the person doesn't ask you to commit a crime? And you just commit and say, I had a gun to my head. You're guilty. That's right. Now, there are situational liability, and there are crimes of possession, offenses of possession. Now, for situational liability, you may want to look at R V Larsoner, uh, where the defendant, uh, she was a French woman, was deported against her will. She was deported from Ireland to England by the Irish authorities. When she arrived to England, she was the, she was charged with the offense of being an illegal alien. Her conviction was upheld despite the fact that she had not voluntarily come to England. And we're talking here about from 1933. Okay, so I guess this doesn't happen anymore, but this happened. All right. So this happens when certain, well, there, there are certain statutory offenses that require proof, not some form of conduct. They only require some proof. Okay. And the defendant is just in the situation that the law forbids the defendant to be, that we're talking here in the case of Larson or R. Then we have certain crimes of possession, like that when the defendant is in possession of prohibited objects and substances. Can anybody give me an idea of what a crime of possession can be? Controlled substances, drug, that's right. Now, in the case we're mentioning here, uh, you will find that, that the defendant was brought on a stretcher to a hospital. The doctor discovered that he was mentally drunk and asked him to leave. He was later seen slump on a seat in the corridor, and so the police were called. They removed him to the roadway, formed the opinion he was drunk, and placed him in the car parked nearby. Did he commit a crime? What time was it? Okay. Which one will it be? Yes, he was charged with uh, being drunk on a public street, on a highway. And the last like we have here, we're going to talk about again omission. Well, it's not the commission on a crime. However, there are certain crimes that cannot be committed by omission, like assault. You cannot assault somebody just by omission. Then we have the key requirements for criminal liability and omission. We have, and we mentioned this already. Um, the conduct element of the crime in the question must be top capable of commission by omission. The circumstances must create a legal duty to act. And the defendant's failure to act must be a breach of that duty. Okay, so for example, we talk here about firemen, uh, a doctor or a parent or a sibling who have a legal duty to act. Then we talk about the breach of the legal duty must be defined. You, the legal duty must be defined. Uh, there are examples like a parent who voluntarily fails to give uh, medicine to his child, and the child dies or goes into coma because of the lack of it or because of the excess of it. Okay. 
Okay. Is there any question up to here? Well, I see a question that we're talking about the drunken person because he was thrown with by cops and shot. Could there be a defense for this? Was he drunk or not? He was put on the streets by cop. He was drunk and he was on the street. Is that a crime? Yes. Okay. So, do you see any defense on it? Maybe. But we're talking here about situational liability. You are just in the situation that the law forbids you to be. Like when you park when it says no parking. Well, and that might be his defense. Was he really wrong? So what is the defense is medication? We talked about this before. What would that be? Drinking medication? How's that? Well, you're trying really hard, Carl. Um, I think in there, we're talking about situational liability where the person would be in the situation where the law is forbidding him to be. I will encourage you to go to the case law that is essential there and find out what happened or what can happen, what the defense can he use or could of him use before. Okay. Um, if you have any other question or if you don't have any questions, it was a good pleasure to be with you today. Uh, I was told you had the slides before. Okay, I will make sure that you have them again. Okay, let me see if I can share. Can you download it from what I have? Okay, so I will make sure that you get them. Okay. Thank you so much to all of you, and I wish you good luck and good fun. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. You too. Have a great day.
Hello, guys. So that was the end of uh, your criminal law lecture two, and uh, I hope you enjoyed Ms. Tatiana Obando's teaching. And the way she was teaching, actually, just a word on that, um, is a typical American way of teaching, and I hope you had enjoyed it.